So, hello everybody. <laughs> My name is Pavel Golub. I live in Ukraine and nowadays probably everyone know where it is due thanks to HBO TV series Chernobyl. Uh, I'm working on Cybertech and today I want to to talk about translation, internationalization and localization processes and how it is done and in what way we may improve our processes. Uh, uh, how I get it, how I get to it. Uh, first, we, this year we started to build our Ukrainian community and I think that mm, uh, that task, translation of uh, Postgres itself and uh, infrastructure and uh, others uh, programs uh, may help in uh, uh, building our community. So here I am. Uh, about my company, we do everything. Uh, we, <laughs> our headquarter in Austria, but we have offices in Estonia, Switzerland and Uruguay. Our clients, some of them, our services. So let's go. Uh, some facts. Uh, 70, 72% per, uh, of consumers say they want uh, to buy or use uh, products uh, with information available on their own languages. Uh, if, uh, if content is offered only in one language, usually it's English, uh, it can address at most 30% of total online population. And to cover the whole earth, we need to use 7,000 languages. And, but if we want to cover 80% of uh, population, uh, it's enough uh, 83 languages. Um, I'm using here Wikidata. Uh, top 10 internet languages. I really like these uh, precise numbers, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, it's not easy to, 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 to have idea how it is, so I create a chart. So as you see, 25% of internet users are using English, then 20% Chinese, 8 Spanish, five Arabic, Portuguese, it means Portuguese, Brazilian, and Portuguese, Portuguese, Malaysian, French, Japanese, Japanese, Russian, German, and others' languages are 22%. Um, why anybody want to translate product, especially Postgres open source? First of all, you might want to your product in uh, governance sector, in military sector, in healthcare. In this way, you must be translated, as for example, Postgres Pro translated their product to 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 to, to fit the requi requi requirements. Uh, also, if you want to teach Postgres to your students, you also should translate it. Uh, some corporations have restrictions on using untranslated uh, applications and some kind of licensing may require this. When you want to translate, you probably want to translate if you want to build local communities, new local communities. If you want to improve user adoption, especially for students, for high school, uh, for high school students, uh, if you are not open source but enterprise, probably you want to open new markets and countries. Uh, or you want to build credibility if people see uh, application in, nat in, in, in native language, they feel more comfortable. So why won't anybody why anybody want localization? So localization help us spread the Postgres. It help us build in community. And this process may be done by non-developers 
without any knowledge about internal architecture or structure, without any knowledge of programming languages. And this is the excellent area for beginners because our Ukrainian localization is done by a team of four high school students with my mentorship, but it, it's working. What is internationalization is? This is the process of designing a software um, so then it can be adapted for various languages and regions without um, any engineering changes. Uh, so localization is the, process, is the process of adapting already internal, <laughs> internationalized software for a specific region or language or languages by translating text and edit specific content. So uh, any application uh, may be internationalized, but not yet localized. Uh, and when we say about regions and languages, we mean that, for example, Canada has three languages, this English, French, and I forgot the, the, the third. Uh, for example, um, we have different um, languages for uh, Australia, uh, USA, and English. They are all English, but with specific issues. Um, Postgres and most of uh, applications in our infra, uh, you know, infrastructure uses GetText library. Uh, GetText is a library for internal, internal in the localization. It supports many languages. I, I think that even Klingon may be imported here. It supports plurals, genders, and it supports context comments, so develop, uh, developers may leave um, what exactly uh, this string means uh, to, to, to help translator to understand what exactly developer want to say. Uh, when we using get text, our translators no need any sources. All strings are gathered to the PO file. PO stands for portable object. It's just a text file. You may edit it, edit it with the, any uh, editor. After work on this PO file, it's compiled to MO file. MO stands for machine object. It's a binary file. Uh, then during work, application loads MO file into memory. And then each translated string is searched by hash and is used. Mm, just like an example, it's a PSQL. Um, as we see, fprintf uh, want to have localized string. Underscore is a macros for get text function call, just to make it more, uh, more narrow. So underscore means get text. Get text uh, accepts string. Then if it available in MO file, it find it and replaces with the translation. Um, we, we, we are using get x get text to generate PO files. Uh, this is POT means template. When first we generate PO files, it's called PO, PO, POT, portable object template. Uh, means that message strings are empty. Then if we want to introduce new translation, we rename it, this file into PSQL underscore whatever UK if, 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 if it's Ukrainian or a row if, if it's Romanian and working with it, filling these message strings using or simple text editor or special editors. 
So what is under the hood? Postgres uses get text library. Developers are using get text function, which is macros for underscore. Ma underscore is macros for get text function. Then strings parsed on the source code and gathered into one PO file. Translators then work with these PO files. Then these PO files are uh, compiled uh, into MO files, and then uh, these MO files are used in uh, during run. Okay, so what we have now? Um, so the same top ten internet languages, but uh, uh, now let's check uh, what version of Postgres, uh, uh, how, mu how much of that languages is translated. So English is 100%, no problem. Chinese, 90 plus, not bad. Spanish, 100%. Arabic, zero for all. Uh, Portuguese, but this is not Portuguese. This Portuguese Brazilian version. Uh, so 86%. Indonesian, uh, French, Japanese, Russian are 100%. And German, 99, not bad except for Arabic languages, uh, language. I have no idea if we have many customers or users in Arabic world, but I think that not. I, I think we do, actually. Yes? Oh, yeah, yes. Probably. Okay, so we have Hebrew translated for 20%, but yes, RTL, yes. Okay, to start work with uh, translation right now, these three links are enough. Uh, first is the wiki where described all this uh, scenario I would show. Uh, the second is Babel PostgreSQL org, where uh, one can download any PO file for translation. Or if we are talking about new language, we will download POT file, rename it to proper PO file name, and we'll work with it. And PGSQL translator mailing list, where all this is discussed and where patches may be proposed. However, we have also Redmine ticket, uh, ticketing system, uh, where also uh, one may uh, uh, upload patches. So workflow is simple. We are going to Babel, PostgreSQL, we choose language, choose release. Uh, it should be the last stable release. If we are uh, starting from the scratch for the new language, or it may be the master, master branch, uh, which is uh, uh, uploaded to the Babel PostgreSQL uh, org uh, after uh, the beta process uh, is starting for the new release. Uh, we download POT or PO file. If we have PO file, if our language is started, is translated for some part we, s we download PO file. If we are starting from scratch, we are downloading POT file, rename it, work with it. There are several uh, editors. The most famous is PO edit. It's fine. Uh, Kbabel, Emacs, Sublime. So, but Sublime is uh, probably need to, to be with uh, some plugins. Uh, then, we review, check it, and submit to mailing list or to Redmine. Then depends on uh, how good our translation is. Is it compatible? Um, someone from uh, committers may apply this patch. Okay. So, let me show you 
all this. So we are starting to avoid it. Um, let's find that how uh, our uh, Babel Postgres SQL org looks like. It's just a table. As I said, uh, the beta for 12th version is started, so we have master here. As you can see, it absolutely white. White means that there is no uh, or a little of translation. The yellow means that uh, this is uh, this com uh, this particular file is translated for 90% or more and green means that this file is translated completely and the red wind oh, in the red uh, color uh, for example PG rewind for Japanese uh, contains some errors and need to be fixed okay so let's Uh, 27. 27, yes, it's 27. Yes, right now we have, but uh, some languages are mm, not well represented. For example, Hungarian, Afrikaans, Netherlands. Uh, I have no idea how they appear here. So anyway, uh, let's try to download, I don't know, uh, let it be PL, PLTCL, okay, so I save it, I save it like PO file and okay, let it be UK, so I save it, then in PO edit we should open it and that's how user interface looks like oh very bad so we have a list of strings uh, then we have a translation memo where we can enter our uh, translation and on the right you can see that uh, we may use translation suggestion uh, from Microsoft Beans translation, I think. But uh, in um, we may, how I know that we may um, uh, use Google as well. And in the pro version of Edit, probably we may use DeepL translator and some others. Um, so okay, let's. Processing parameter. So, I don't know. Oh, yes, maybe. No, no, no. Show preferences? No, show preferences. No. File preferences. Oh, yes. much better okay so processing parameter yeah okay something like this and as you see we have um, s which will be replaced by some uh, system argument when uh, this function will be called. Uh, okay, and we move to another, and this process we we made uh, until the end. Then we save this file. Then we try to compile it, fed it, compile it automatically. So let's see if it. Yes, now you can see we have po file and we have mo file because edit compiles it automatically then we may take this mo file oh po file and send it to uh, translator mailing list or uh, send it to readmine 
uh, ticket system. Okay. Um, um, that process works well, and it's professional enough, and it's cool. And, uh, probably all translation we did for Postgres was done this way. Uh, but when we start with our young community, it, I understand that uh, high school kids cannot use uh, such a complicated process, and they need something, uh, something light or something uh, more familiar with. And I remember that nowadays we have several translation environments, online translation environments, which may be used for this purpose. So, and some of these files um, uh, are too big to be translated by one person in a reasonable time. And uh, we agreed on this, that uh, every day, um, every student will translate at least 10 strings. So we will finish till the September before the Postgres uh, 12 will be released. So the proposed workflow is we will use crowding.com um, translation service. I uh, registered a project there. So we go on this uh, service, we choose language, we choose Postgres release, the same as on Bubble. Uh, we work uh, with it online using only our own browser. Uh, then uh, after translation, someone, that me in this case, will review these strings. Uh, and after review, I download this PO file and upload it to Redmine ticket system or to mailing list. So let me show how this should look like. Okay, so here we have a uh, crowd in. Can you see it? Maybe I should. It's better. This uh, I logged in on uh, under my account. So this is admin view. Uh, the view for translator is a little bit simpler, but the main thing is the, the main idea is the same. So we have a home dashboard where our languages available are listed. We, we see that. Um, uh, we see we see that uh, some we see two uh, two numbers persons nine, for example for ukrainian 49 and 14 49 means that 49% of all strings are translated and the second one 14 means that 14% of all strings are reviewed uh, so Let's see how the user interface looks like. When we are choosing language, then we should choose um, the file uh, on which we will work. As you can see, mm, the structure of uh, um, the structure of, uh, uh, of, of, of 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 system is much more similar to what we have in Postgres uh, sources. Uh, that is because I uploaded these files using import from GitHub. And when you import using GitHub, uh, Crowdin uh, preserves all, uh, the all the structure of all catalogs, folders, etc. But uh, if, if uh, you want to, if someone wants to use just a list of files, then uh, the information about uh, source structure will be destroyed and we will see only list of files. Okay, let's try, I don't know. PG dump. Okay. 
Um, so now we are in translation environment for um, in translation user interface. Um, it much it's, it's pretty the same as a po edit except that uh, all strings are on the left side, and uh, in the middle you have uh, the information about uh, string now. Uh, translated, you see that some of uh, some of the words are un uh, are um, are uh, highlighted. If the world is highlighted, that means that this particular term is in glossary, and it should be translated as it says in glossary. Ex um, moreover, in glossary, there is a short description of what this term means, of what this term is. Uh, then we see context information. This is the source file and line, and uh, what format is it. Uh, then we, the, here we have uh, our um, edit where we should put our translation and let's see untranslated something okay uh, so here we have untranslated table as you see it is glossary it has description it has uh, translation and uh, here in the middle on the bottom in the middle there are three, three items. First, if there is some similar translations, if there is some similar translation, okay, let's return to the show O. Okay. If there are some similar translation, it will be shown here, will be shown uh, uh, who was the translator proposed it, and uh, is it uh, uh, is it uh, is it uh, approved or not? Is it reviewed or not? Uh, you may delete it, delete it, or it's for uh, admin or for reviewer. Uh, then we have uh, TM means uh, translation memory. Uh, translation memory is the table or database which uh, is used to store uh, all translated strings and it looks in its table if this currently translated string is similar uh, for uh, for one uh, already translated, and if it does, then it shows here. And uh, for for, th for this particular, we see that it's perfect match, 100%. That means that this particular string already been translated, and it's uh, it is it, it is in uh, translation memory. So we may use it, and uh, and that's all. Um, and the Last but not least, we may use um, other languages to see how this string was translated in other languages. For example, if we are working with Ukrainian, we may use Russian, Czech, or Polish, or, um, or other Slavonic languages to have idea how other translators uh, translated this uh, um, this string, and uh, we may be more consistent uh, with other translations. And we have uh, on the right we have comments for each string. So if translator have no idea what this means, or he has some uh, ideas or whatever, uh, he or she may leave a comment for this uh, for this particular string. If he or she translator thinks that uh, this string is is wrong, is incorrect, or has some uh, 
uh, typo or whatever, you just should mark it as issue and reviewer and administrator will be notified and may check what exactly wrong with this particular string and check it, fix it, uh, or um, here we have translation memory. So let's try to find some table. Yes, we have table and we have plurals for tables and we have all tables, ch ch child tables, foreign tables. Uh, so if, if you're stuck with some word, you may uh, go through the list of this translation memory uh, and see in, in what context this term or word were used and decide how to translate it. And the last is uh, glossary. So with the, uh, the same as uh, this floating window, the, 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 that is the same uh, on the right. So you may see what exactly, uh, what exactly terms uh, from this particular string are in glossary, what do they mean, and how they are translated. Uh, so that was translator. Let's view to proofreading mode. Proofreading mode, no, the proof, okay. Uh, as you can see, there a little bit, uh, it's, it's much simpler interface for reviewer. So you are going through all translated strings, and if you are fine with it, you just mark it as approved, approved, approved. There is hot key, there are hot keys for this. Uh, so if, if you think that uh, something is wrong, um, you may, you may, you may, you may change. And then, and then save, and then your version will be saved as, tra as translation, and automatically, autom automatically will be marked as reviewed. Okay, so let's quit editor. After we worked on our file, we may download it. Uh, let's let's save it. Yes, I want to replace locally, and the process is the same as for our old schema. We put it, we, we send it on uh, a translator's mailing list, or we add it to our Redmind Redmind um, ticket system. Okay, uh, as for administration, uh, we ha um, um, Crowdin uh, has uh, integration with uh, GitHub and uh, other, with GitLab and other um, source control uh, systems. But since uh, Postgres um, GitHub is only a mirror of the real uh, control system, we cannot fully integrate it with, uh, with the, this, uh, with the crowding translation environment. However, I think that using uh, files from Babel, Postgres, uh, Babel uh, .postgresql.org is much better approach since uh, we, may, we, we, we may be sure that our files are consistent. So, for example, uh, we may update, we may, admin may update crowding translation files weekly from the Babel and be sure that there will be no forks between these files. 
What are the pros of online translation platform? First of all, you don't need special editors. You don't know. Oh, you don't need uh, no third-party software. You don't need to know how to work with it. Uh, the second, it is the unified translation environment. So every translator, every reviewer uh, has the same user interface. And if, if someone's stuck, you may help him because you have the same, uh, the same user interface before you. Uh, for uh, for, for uh, online translation environment, we have dashboard and notifications. As I said, if uh, someone, translator or reviewer, marked uh, string as issue, or then uh, all reviewers and administrators will be notified about it. Um, you may be notified about uh, completeness of uh, some file translation. Uh, you may uh, you may chat with each, with each other inside uh, this environment um, about some strings, particular or or uh, or files. Um, it supports history of all translations, so it any moment we know who, when, and how translated this particular string, how it changes all over the time. Of course, it has glossary. It's a, it's a huge help for, for everybody. Using glossary, your translation um, is consistent, uh, and uh, you spend a much less time on it, remembering, oh, how did I translate that specific term, which I met only once and now need to remember. And of course, this environment has a system of suggestions. Uh, they, uh, I mean, Crowdin uh, may use Google, Crowdin may use um, Microsoft uh, translator, I mean, and uh, Crowdin may use DeepL translator. Uh, however, DeepL is not free, so I don't know how to be here, but it, it's the best. I tried it. So uh, it has instant saving, instant renewing on the same, uh, on the same screen. So I understand the Crowdin is a paid platform, right? Yes, Crowdin is a paid platform for enterprise application. It's absolutely free for open source. So if you're open source project, you gain all functionality as for the, the most costly plan. So we may translate Postgres, we may translate pgadmin, we may translate Petroni, we may translate whatever open source projects we have in one place and all these projects will share the same translation memory and the same glossary. So if it's, um, okay. And role system, we have admins, translators, and reviewers. And for each project, we may uh, specify who will, who will be in charge, who will be translator, we may grant some permissions to translate, e and we may not. So not anybody may translate this file, for example. So before, uh, before translator is capable of translating, it asks admin, may I translate this particular file for that particular language? And if administrator is agreed, then it grant permission for translation. This Oh. oh. This is message from Louis Trindat. 
uh, and he asks, is it possible to translate uh, pro Postgres to European Portuguese localization? But uh, this is our conversation, uh, but what about... Oh, Tomas Vandra. <laughs> Asaf. <laughs> so uh, you have, uh, you have uh, notifications. Okay, a uh, new join request for PostgreSQL project, Tsaki. He wants to participate in Hebrew translation. I, want to li I would like to help translate PostgreSQL in Hebrew and there will be accept, decline, or chat. So, mm. this is uh, just like, you know, social platform. So, some of them are employers of uh, some companies and they translate uh, on this site. Some of them are uh, professional translators and they are looking for help or for uh, to be paid for this, uh, just like a Transifex, the same, the same. So the crowd in is interested to have as much as possible translators, because then each translator um, has its, its own uh, rank or I don't know how to uh, karma or whatever. And the cooler you are, the more uh, the more work you have, and the more you paid. So, if you translate open source project, it will raise your karma, and you become the most valuable translator on this platform. So, uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I think that it's uh, it's even more convenient because uh, this uh, system supports not only PO uh, format but uh, Xlif, Doc, and uh, and some more. So probably we may just upload SGML or HTML or what we have to just be translated as is and downloaded back. But I have no, I, I, I didn't check this. I only worked with PO files. Okay, and the last, we may hire pro translators if we want, or if our sponsors want to hire anybody. As I said, this is the social platform where translators are leaving and if, uh, if, if someone think that uh, paying someone to, to, to make translation to, to any particular language is, is okay, then it's fine, I think. Uh, okay, cons online translation. Of course, you should to be online. Uh, browser is not the fastest environment. Uh, hotkeys may interfere with the browser and extension you have. Uh, and of course, the free translation plan is only possible for open source. So if we want to translate EnterpriseDB or Postgres Pro, we should pay money. <laughs> Okay, questions? No questions? Then I'll show you what I discovered about PoEdit. Turns out, uh, turned out that PoEdit in the latest version, oh, sorry. Can connect to crowd in directly. 
So you may use whatever file you want from your crowding account, crowding project, set OK, and this file is translated. You work with it offline or online. And after you hit Control S, save, all these translated strings are gone to crowd in automatically. And I think this is fine. You download some file before your flight, you're working in airplane, then you land, Control S, and all your translations are on server. Yes. Well, that is. Thank you.